Going green, it's a trend affecting so many aspects of our lives. No single industry will have a greater impact reducing air pollution and increasing sustainability than automobiles. Now, while a handful of auto companies are moving in that direction, mass production of an all electric vehicle or EV is slated to hit showroom floors around the country right now. So with us to discuss where EV is and where it's headed is Mr. Brendan Jones, Director of Electric Vehicle Marketing for Nissan North America. Good morning. Good morning. So excited you're here. Excellent. So I've am never I. driven an EV, so I'm really curious about all, everything you're going to teach me about it. You have one. I have. We drive one at home. Absolutely. Absolutely love it, don't you? Absolutely. It's a great car. Well, you know, it's 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 been a game changer in the, in recent years, no doubt about that. And you know, a lot of people don't know that, and I think a lot of people just are thinking maybe it's not fast enough, or I'm just not going to get enough, you know, mileage to it. So we decided to hit the streets of South Florida, talk to some people about electric cars, see what their thoughts are. Uh, take a look at this. It's kind of cute. Electric vehicles make a lot of sense if you are, one, if you're concerned about the environment, two, if you want to save some money. This is so expensive. I can't even afford it myself right now. For a normal sitting driver, a city driver who, uh, you know, commutes within a, maybe a five mile radius, it would be, uh, you know, quite economical to be able to do that. I don't know if I would drive an electric car or not. I guess if gas prices hit like an all time high. Uh, yes, I would like to test drive one and, uh, what is it, EV? EV. An EV, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, it's a lot more convenient to charge your car instead of going to the gas station. It takes extra time. When you're home, you can charge your car. To me, it just makes more sense. You see? You see, everybody has like different, you know, opinions on this, especially me and Brendan, you know, electric vehicles have come a long, long way from early days, you know, nearly 100 years ago. I mean, look at these pictures. A lot of people don't even know that. And here's my question. Why has the industry taken, you know, kind of a, a longer time to, to rev this up again? Well, I think at the beginning, uh, electric vehicles and internal combustion engines competed head to head. With mass production, though, internal combustion engines took the lead. Now we have the technological advancements to produce electric vehicles on a mass scale. So the technology is here. It's right. Mm -hmm. And the batteries are right. And now we have the vehicles and showrooms across the United States. So EV, it's time is now. And now that you're saying EV, the time is now, we're now hearing more than ever the EV lifestyle. So how does that fit into our lifestyle today? The EV lifestyle is a consumer that purchases the vehicle takes advantage of all the incentives that are out there. For California, ex an example, they waive the HOV lane. Now, if you've ever driven in California <laughs> traffic, you know that if you can get on it in a single passenger, it's huge. Yeah. Your lifestyle improves, your commute uh, improves. Uh, now, these incentives are available throughout the United States today. And what about, well, it's not refueling, so I have to reword it now, recharging. How, how does that work? There's three levels of recharging. We have a 110 cord set, which comes with the car, uh -huh. and then also consumers install in their home, which is called a level two. And that charges the vehicle uh, from zero to fully charged in eight hours. But most consumers only charge for three overnight. That's so it? they come home, they plug in, and their vehicle is charged up and ready to go in the morning. And from a technological perspective, they can do it all via their iPhone. Oh, and there you go. You charge your iPhone, and then you charge the car. That, absolutely. That's easy a good peasy. analogy. There you go. Well, that's easy for me, and I like easy. Okay, I have to ask this because I, you know, I sometimes put the pedal to the metal, you know. Uh, I kind of sometimes think it's not going to go fast enough. You say no because you. You even told me people get tickets with this car. Yeah, the big issue with the Leaf is foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> so it will fly off the really? line. And we've had lots of consumers tell us about their tickets. Uh, <laughs> now that I got a speeding ticket get again driving the Leaf. Uh, but it moves fast. And everybody in the office, we live right off of a uh, uh, major interstate, and that's the first thing they do. They did. And they come Boom. back and go, wow, wow, this car is fast. So no doubt it's important to do the test drive, and obviously you're getting great positive remarks when they do. Absolutely. We've done over 120,000 test drives nationwide, and everybody who gets out of the car has what we call this leaf smile because the car was so much more than they expected. The drivability was excellent, the acceleration was excellent, and the technology that's in the vehicle was excellent. So it's the car that fits all your needs. Well, I gotta be honest, my husband has a Nissan Maxima. He loves it. Uh, I'm looking for a new car, so I, I, wanna, I wanna leave Smile test drive. Well, we can catch you one. All right, deal. Absolutely. It's gotta be red. It'll, it'll be red. Rojo. Always red. Thank you, sir. And if you'd like to find out more about the shift to electric vehicles or have specific questions about the LEAF electric vehicle, that's L-E-A-F, visit NissanUSA.com. I bet you 20 bucks my husband will then keep the LEAF.